what we put together was this is just some stuff that I've been fortunate enough to be a part of in the years of Demolition Derby. I've competed at Kansas three times at Blizzard Bash, and we went to the Las Vegas team show, and our team won that. So I wasn't driving on the track in Vegas. Fortunately, we had a great team on the track. But when it comes to team shows, I myself, I really enjoy them, and I think they're an awesome part of Demolition Derby. Uh, so as we go through this, team success that I've seen you know, we've been on the losing side of teams. We've been on the winning side of teams. But team success is bigger than just winning on the track. Um, and there's some key elements throughout this that we're going to talk about that I feel are absolutely vitally important for a successful team. So this is a pretty awesome picture. That was at Vegas, you know, just the feature lineup and all the lights and it was an amazing experience that same month i competed at kansas and then we left kansas and went to las vegas and that was a long month <laughs> an expensive month <laughs> a tiring month but it was a lifelong experience that you know a lot of people probably don't get to get to participate in and i was fortunate so you know the first thing that i feel is very important with teams is, you know, it's one thing just to say, let's go run a team show. So, but you wanna pick the right event. When I say the right event, th there's so much available out there. You know, I listed some, and there's some on here that ain't on the list, and I didn't, you know, indirectly not pick somebody because, but you got everything from, you know, spring shows coming up from Total Madness this month, the Summit Arena Indoor Show. Two weeks. Two weeks. Uh, Blizzard Bash, Bash for Cash, there's the Bristol show that's coming up, and there's a lot of others out there, like Stonebro Fair, we're having a team show this upcoming fall, my hometown, um, known for just a, a slugfest of a show. Um, I'm fielding two teams, one team is my team, and then I have a team that I'm putting together with some seasoned young drivers. So. Uh, if you know anybody, I'm going to be looking at resumes to put three kids on a team and go compete. So some of the questions to ask before you join, for, you know, a group or if you decide you want to run a team show is what equipment and build is your comfort zone? Because if you're a super stock guy or a light weld or a hobby stock, you know, kind of going to some of these shows on this list it's a very high-end build and it requires a lot of a lot of high-end equipment uh, and plus logistically they're out there which we will get to in a little bit so that's always you know reflecting what your program structure and also who's available because if you decide like, oh, we're going to go, you know, run the bash team show, we're going to go to camp, we're going to go here, and you don't have the tools or the parts in your toolbox to build that level of car, you just kind of really handicap yourself. You know, not only with what you got to find in a certain time frame, but, you know, money doesn't grow on trees. So if you got to completely invest in a different program, then you're really going in a direction that's probably not going to be the best for you, in my opinion. So there's a, there's a time to get there or whatever, but start somewhere where it fits first because there's more to a team show than just getting three or four guys and showing up somewhere. Okay. Choosing the right people. And uh, th this is an absolute must in a lot of different areas. Okay. Uh, just getting three people who are willing to fill out an entry form or show up with you, that's a good start, but you got to have the right people, okay? You also got to have the right people in your pit, all right? And you have to have the right people supporting you. Creating team cohesion, a lot of people, <clears throat> to, to experience that, you got to have people in your corner that you trust, that you know, that you can rely on. It's it's just how it is. Uh, that team cohesion usually starts with maybe guys you've ran with. 
You'd be surprised how many successful teams get developed out of competitors, guys that ran against each other in an area for years, and then they end up on the same team. You ever heard, you know, the old saying, "If you can't, if you can't beat them, join them." <laughs> some you'd be surprised how well that works in some aspects. Where if you get the right people on there, you really get a strong team element. Uh, the commitment it takes to a team show, it ain't about you. It's about your teammates. So anywhere where you drop the ball or you slack or you choose not to give your full commitment, you're taking that away from your team members, in my opinion. Okay, and really it's not an opinion, it's a fact, all right? Uh, drivers as teammates, there's some big factors on here that play a huge, huge part, all right? Dependability. Okay, I got to be able to depend upon you, number one, to show up. I got to depend upon you to have your car right so it goes through inspection. I got to depend upon you to have the right tools and pit crew with you. I got to depend upon you to watch my back on the track. I got to depend upon you to do your job on the track. As do you, that teammate should hold you on the same accountability level. Skill. Look, you're now elevating yourself to a different part of Demolition Derby where you've chose to make the commitment to your teammate to say that I'm able to go out there with you and drive, okay? So you need that certain level of ability to compete, okay? And, and look, team shows take it might, it does take a little bit of getting used to, depending upon whether it's three car, four car, the brackets, but you need to have the right guys that are skilled. Selflessness, and I stole this from a guy named Chad Wright. I don't know, anybody know who Chad Wright is? You ever seen him on TikTok or anything like that? He was a SEAL operator, and now he does all this really cool stuff and that. But he, but in special operations groups, you'll find out with a lot of team stuff, there's a lot of things that make up team members that aren't what you think are textbook. And selflessness is one of the biggest things, okay? And there's a lot of drivers out there that have won a lot of demolition derbies, and they got a lot of trophies at home in their garage that I would not pick as my teammate because they've only ever cared about one thing, and that was their way to win on the track no matter what it took to win. Okay, and there's a lot of guys that got that same amount of trophies that can operate as a selfless person, but I think everybody understands by what I mean by that. Okay, you need somebody that's willing to put themselves, or you have to be willing to put yourself out there for your teammate. That means you don't just drive by them if they're in trouble, okay? You have to do your part. If they're down somewhere getting their butt handed to them, depending upon how that came out or how it washed out, it's your job to back them up and go take care of business. The key part is don't get in that position. Now, when I ran on teams with Team America and either the other teams, our thing was if I'm in trouble and there's no saving me, <clears throat> don't come because then we're going to lose more cars, okay? Just that simple. I'm not going to take a teammate down with me either. The biggest thing is don't hit your teammate. <laughs> You'd be surprised when you watch some different stuff. And you see people drive the friendly fire that they get from their teammates. So that being dependability, scale, and selflessness, uh, second to none. <clears throat> Pit crew. If you're going to run, if you're going to run team shows where you're going to come out of a qualifying heat and it's a bracket style stack team show, you best have a great pit crew. I don't care how good of a driver you are. I don't care how good you built your car. You've got to put Humpty Dumpty back together between every bracket. Okay. So you got to have an experienced pit crew. You got to have guys that you can trust to work on your car. Okay. You've got to have dependable guys that are going to be there for the show because a lot of team shows, you only have a certain amount of time between your in the morning or however it's constructed to work on your car. So if your hours of being able to work on that car are seven to four before it's impounded, 
every battery better be there bright and early ready to start working on that car okay don't show up at 9 30 because you went out the night before and did whatever you didn't feel like getting out of bed you made a commitment okay to be there all right the other thing is when you're in a when you're in a stressful environment you're working on cars maybe you got to go into a concy and you're asking people to do things depending upon how you're running your pit and we'll get into some of this other stuff you know when i say good at taking orders what i mean is when you tell somebody do this or this don't turn it into an argument don't turn it into a debate get the job done okay everybody's simply there to accomplish something all right uh, another thing sponsorship I feel if you can get the most of it you can get for your team, the better. It takes a lot of uh, financial pressure off everybody, helps get you to where you're going, depending upon the show you're going to. You know, uh, for example, you know, I listed a lot of shows and see Sam walking in here. So if you're going to go to South Dakota and you live in Pennsylvania, it's a long way and a lot of fuel, right? So you got to start calculating. <clears throat> kind of what it's going to cost you that's why at the beginning i said pick the right event that works for your team you know if you got three guys or four guys and you want to go somewhere and run a team show but none of you got a pickup truck that can make it out of the county rethink it maybe look at like let's start our program locally or look at a local show we can get to because there's a lot of elements there the other side of it is when we get into some other things you no longer have home field advantage for say you got to make sure you're properly equipped we'll get into that in the next slide but so support also comes in other ways outside of money maybe you get people to give you parts maybe you get people to actually you know say hey you know what we got a we got a tractor trailer available or we got a three car hauler <clears throat> we'd like to haul three cars for you you know sometimes it's easier for companies or people to help without writing you a check but give you things that are a necessity to help you get to the event or operate at the event. Okay, structure your program, all right? And this is, this is what you're doing, okay? When you, when you look at any professional motorsport program, it's all about a team. I don't care if it's, you know, if you're on an NHRA funny car, uh, World Outlaw, Sprint car, late model, whether it's trophy trucks, motocross, you have a structured program, all right? A team captain, all right, your leader, if you're the team captain, you got a big responsibility, and not everybody fits that mold, okay? But if you are the captain or you're the guy that's in the lead position for your team, you got to make sure that you do the right things for your team on and off the track. Okay. You want to make sure each person that's affiliated with your team has a job. Okay. At every position, at every, at every, at every position, everybody needs to be assigned a job. And no job is any less valuable than, than what someone else might have, might do, okay? So give them the tools and the resources they need to do their job. So if you got a pit crew and you start assigning job responsibilities, make sure they got the equipment, make sure they got what they need, okay? Communication prior, during, and after with each position, driver, crew, et cetera, okay? So after you guys choose that we're going to run an event and we're going to get our, you know, who our team members are, now we're going to communicate on the build of the car, okay? The best thing you can do is make sure all your cars are this very similar if the mold takes you that way. Like, for example, if you guys are, and I see a lot of team shows say, you know, you can have one of these, one of these. Well, I have an opinion on that too, but you want to make sure that everybody communicates okay like if you're going to do something on a build that maybe one of the other guys might not do or thought of like for example i think if we do this it's going to be a big advantage don't just do it 
and not communicate. Because on game day, when you guys go through inspection, if it does fly, you got one car that maybe could have turned three more or two more into an, with an advantageous option on it. Or maybe you're the guy that did something you shouldn't have done. And now you got either a lot of work to do or you're getting loaded and leaving your teammates with one less car. So communicate on how you guys are building your cars, how you're putting them together. Okay. Also, when you get to the track, okay, what time's inspection? A lot of these team shows have scheduled inspection times or, sp or specific days. All right. When are we leaving? Okay. All these little important things. That way they can create a calendar. Okay. We're on the road to wherever at this date. That means my car has to be done at this date. And if you're struggling, tell your teammates. Don't get within a month of the show and be like, hey, my engine ain't back from wherever. Or, hey, I ran last week and uh, I broke a block or now my rear, I got to get a rear end. Okay. Things happen, but make sure your team's willing to, you know, come together. Somebody will come up with a part. Okay. But don't wait until you're at the two yard line to give somebody some bad news. All right. Uh, during the event. Okay. Don't just start throwing stuff out, you know, when you're fixing or doing whatever, communicate with your people. All right. We go to pit management and car crew. This is absolutely what wins team shows. They're one in the pits. Okay. Yeah. They give you the checkered flag on the track, but most team shows, in my opinion, are all one in the pits. Every one of them, because you got to go through a bracket style, depending upon what you're doing you're putting the cars back together so the better you can do that and the better you can outperform your competitors that's one more advantage you have okay even if you have guys that are weak maybe on the resume with wins on the track they might bring an amazing amount of resource in a pit crew all right where that's going to help elevate them all right uh, when we talk about foods meals and water you get to some of these big shows or any show and you're working, working, working. Next thing you know, you didn't eat for a day. <laughs> Somebody forget. So I always have someone on deck to make sure that's, that's handled. Parts list, tool and equipment checklist. You know, we have a complete parts list, especially if we have common cars on the team. <laughs> Who's got what? Okay, we'll spindles, this, that, this. We'll actually make an Excel sheet with a parts list and share it between everybody. So A, we're not overpacking extra stuff that you don't need. Everybody has what they need for their car and for their pit crew as far as equipment checklist, all right? <clears throat> for example, when we went to Vegas, what, I, what we did is we arranged to have equipment there from a rental company, from um, an air gas rental company, welders, generators, plasma cutters, torches, everything that we didn't want to try to truck 2200 plus miles you know we were able to get it source it locally have it there and and it's ready to use three welders three this three that and then that was less stuff we had to take but if you're going somewhere within range where you're taking your garage with you Make sure you communicate with your other teammates. Okay, who has a welder? Okay, who doesn't have a welder? Okay, I've seen more guys show up because they, uh, they brought a portable generator. They brought their weld machine. It's not an inverter style welder. It requires a certain amount of juice and that generator won't support it. So now you're down a welder. Make sure your equipment is gonna work in the field when you get there, okay? Make sure everybody has what they need. Not, you know, it's one thing to have what you got at home in your garage, but when you go to these team shows, you've got to have what you need to fix cars in unideal circumstances. So work very hard on that. The checklists are hugely important because if you don't have a spare transmission, your buddy might have two of them, okay? Make sure each car has a crew assigned to it, the repair parts for that car and everything you need for that car. It takes the stress off each 
car on that team, okay? Another thing that people don't take advantage of, you know, YouTube, all the, all the media coverage, uh, I think every promoter now has, you know, availability to bring in anybody to live stream and whatnot. If you're gonna compete against somebody, and I don't know how many people ever play football or you watch college or whatever, you heard of people watching game tapes, game reels, do some intel on your, on your competitors. Okay, just about every promoter puts out a driver's list, right? At some point, because people, you don't wanna see who's competing, who's doing what. Take advantage of that. Go on YouTube, watch previous year's events. Even if, you know, it's, maybe it's a new show like South Dakota, but these guys previously, you know, competed in Kansas, go back and watch previous years. See how these guys run, see how they operate, see what they drive, okay? And you're gonna find that they don't break habits, all right? And that's like when you look at certain guys that have been successful, it's usually the same team members that are successful and they use the same tactics on the track. They have the same pit set up. So do your homework, you know, go on Facebook, start looking at profiles, you know, it's what the government would do to you. <laughs> but, you know, dig up, you know, know who you're running against. All right. And um, at national levels, you've got people you're competing against and there's a lot of people that are doing the same thing on you. And it, it's a big tool, in my opinion. All right. Logistics. How, how are we getting all this crap there and home? Well, you got to get there. You got to pass inspection. Then you can worry about your next part of the plan. But then you got to come home. All right. So that goes back to that equipment thing, okay? Depending upon where we're going to compete, what do we need for, you know, hauling the stuff? Because, you know, everybody's heard of DOT nowadays, right? <laughs> you know, you take a, you know, 2500 HD and you load down an enclosed trailer with, you know, who knows how much weight, depending upon which lovely state enjoys exercising their DOT cops, you may encounter some problem between point A and point B. The other thing is, it's always expensive to make repairs on the road. Whether it be a, whether you need a tire, whether you need a spare tire, or you know you lose a transmission in a truck, whatever, it always costs more when it ain't close to home. So, logistics is very important to get your car there, to get your equipment there, to get your pit crew there. Don't forget about your pit crew. Everybody worries about getting that car loaded up and down. And then maybe this guy, you know, he's got to go ride with somebody. Well, we got five people in that truck already, you know? So think about things that matter, you know, your, your people that's involved with your program, you want them to be able to do their job with the least amount of stress to do it so they can do it effectively, all right? Make a standard for everybody to operate by. Accountability, integrity, be a good influence. You got somebody in your organization that doesn't really care about things, it's gonna manifest somewhere where you don't need it to, all right? Uh, if, if you don't have any, everybody operating at a certain level, then they're gonna do like, like, for example, you know, if you have a manufacturing plant, you don't care how people are putting your stuff together, they're going to do shoddy workmanship. Okay, <clears throat> team operations are no different. If you don't care how your team members operate after hours, that's going to affect how they're going to show up. Okay, so that's what I say, you know, for us, when we go participate at team shows, it's not a party, it's not a vacation. Okay, there's a lot of people that made a commitment, okay, an, an investment of time and money to support you or support your other teammates or whatever. So let's make it worth everybody's while, okay? After you get a win or you have a successful weekend, <clears throat> hey, you wanna get, have a good time, do whatever, do whatever you consider that is. But <clears throat> during business hours, let's be on point. Let's make sure everybody's there to do their job, okay? Because, 
you know, to pull out and go somewhere and invest half a week or a week or even three days or two days, one thing you don't get back is time. All right. And the one thing I'm not going to do is waste somebody's time because I can't never give it back to them and I can't make more of it. All right. Now, money, I've wasted a lot of my money. I've wasted a lot of other people's money. <laughs> you do have the opportunity to get that back. But you notice I go back to a lot of things, commitment, investing, okay? That's what this is all about, to make it successful, all right? Every car must make the track. Don't let your teammate down. I've seen more situations at team shows where a car doesn't pass tech. I've been involved in it, one of our teams one time, okay? You never want to go into a fight with one less vehicle, one less person, because you're already starting handicap, period. And most of the things I see on that one car that didn't make the cut, look, <clears throat> that car is better to be out there without a front frame horn than not be out there at all. So, you know, keep that in mind. Every car has got to make it on the track. And if you're that guy that you didn't communicate with your team members, you guys notice how I go back to these things? Because it's important. And you show up and you're the sour grape and now you're the odd guy out. And, well, now what do you do? How do you replace that time? How do you make that replacement for your teammate? You don't. You, you basically, in my opinion, and there's a difference between a miscommunication on a rule set because what you'll find is if there's a rule and you guys are all common in your build, everybody's going to have the same thing to debate, not just one guy. All right. So don't let your team down. Don't let your team down. Winning ingredients, the right people. There's no substitution for it. You know, it took basically a small army for us to do what we did in that one month of November. Okay. Uh, the right equipment is a must. You know, most people know it. You know what you're doing. You know how to build a car. Okay, but when you start bringing in extra elements to that, it's more than just what you know and what you know how to do. Okay, there's a lot of people that can operate, you know, on a single level, go win derbies, run their program, but now you're adding other things into it, how you drive, you know, other pit crew, etc. You got to make sure you get better at that. Okay, and Unfortunately, some of the ways to do this and get better at it is participate in it, just like anything else in life. It's rare that you come out of the gate and have a stellar weekend, but all these things help. The right mindset, okay? I've been lucky to run with some of the best people in the business, work with some of the best pit crews, see other teams that are the best in the business. Uh, and when you're when you're at a certain level event, you know, like I don't know how many guys are used to going to your county fair or something. You don't talk to this guy, or nobody shares this, or because everybody thinks they have the secret formula to how to build the best derby car in the world. No one else knows this, so we don't tell anybody anything. You go to some larger events and you get into like what I call a national level pit garage. Look, you all pretty much got the same stuff, especially if the inspections are consistent. It's, and whatever you, you know you you got no black magic in your hat for say that someone else don't have okay because if somebody found something you know three people can keep a secret if two are dead number that so it gets out so these are the winning ingredients in my opinion uh, the right people the right equipment and the right and the right mindset so that concludes pretty much everything that, you know, in my opinion, what makes a successful team element, you know, on and off the track. So if anybody's got any questions, happy to answer them. I've just, I've been lucky to share this stuff because I've got to participate in everything from, you know, local team shows at our fair to Florida, to Kansas, to Las Vegas, and, you know, who knows, maybe someday South Dakota. So, you know, uh, 
we're running a team show at Bash here in uh, May, Memorial Day weekend. So, and uh, what's really unique is some of the teams that I've, you know, that we've operated with, they, they are people from different areas. And, uh, but we've had a lot of things in common. The attitude and the mindset makes every difference. It, it, cre it closes some of those gaps, like not knowing how this guy drives or not. It just, you get, a, there's common threads that make strong teams, okay? Uh, I, I can tell you like Jonathan Heilman and some guys that run compact teams, uh, the teams they put together are just amazingly strong because they, they, they pick the right ingredients. So, you know, before you feel like I want to recruit a team to go do something, like I said, there's names out there you could pick because they're winners and maybe you think they're the best pick. Don't overlook the important things, you know, the commitment, selflessness, what people bring to the table. So that's about it on this. So I thank you for your time. And like I said, these are just key elements that I've been lucky enough to experience with other teams winning and losing. So enjoy the rest of your expo and thank you.